This is chapter 10. It is called Twas Brillig in Muir Woods. Some years ago, the American Library Association staged a convention in San Francisco. Our daughter, Carol Boyce, is a librarian and a faculty member of New Mexico State University in Las Cruces. Carol's Aunt Ellen, since deceased, was at that time on the library faculty at Texas A&M Universities. Both Carol and Ellen attended the convention. Another of Carol's aunts, Sylvia, not a librarian, lived in the San Francisco area in Sausalito. Since three members of our immediate family were going to be in San Francisco at the same time, my wife and I flew to California so that we would have a five-member miniature family reunion. Just a little ways north and west of Sausalito, on the Pacific side of Mount Tamalpais, is the charming Muir Woods National Monument, which is essentially a small grove of redwood trees with a little creek running through it on its way to the Pacific Ocean. On a morning free of convention dates, at the suggestion of Aunt Sylvia, the five of us drove over the mountain for a brief visit to the monument. We left our rented car in the parking lot and walked a half mile downstream along a cool, dank pathway. Then we crossed the stream and walked back. Just a few feet from the parking lot, we passed a young family, a father, probably in his late twenties, a mother, and a young child being carried in the father's arms. When we came within earshot of the family, we heard the father begin to recite to the child, and what he said was, "'Twas brillig, and the slithy toves." The father spoke somewhat accented English, but I have no idea what his first language might have been. By a strange coincidence, each one of the five members of our miniature family reunion know by heart Lewis Carroll's Jabberwocky. And so spontaneously, without invitation or preparation, we joined the uh, father's recitation to the little child. Twas brillig, and the slithy toes did gyre and gimble in the wabe. All mimsy were the borogroves, and the momrass outgrabe. Beware of the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that snatch. Beware the jubjub bird, and shun the frumious bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand. Long time the manxome foe he sought. So rested he by the tum-tum tree and stood a while in thought. And as in ulfish thought he stood, the jabberwock with eyes of flame came whiffling through the tulgy wood and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through the vorpal blade went snicker-snack, he lifted dead, and with its head he came galumphing back. And hast thou slain the jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. O oh, frabjous day, kaloo, kalay, he chortled in his joy. Twas brillig, and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble and the wabe. All mimsy were the borogroves and the momrass outgrave. And then the five of us, saying not another word, bowed solemnly to the family group, turned and walked back to our car in the parking lot, leaving a perhaps puzzled family wondering 
if all the people in America know the Jabberwocky by heart.